Welcome to another episode of Bashment Bay TV. I'm your host, Sharon Cummings. My host, Tanya, is not here today because she had a project that she had to get done for her job. So she'll be back next time. Our topic today will be a continuation for Women's Month. Even though it's April, we weren't able to do our last show um, celebrating women because of a lot of complications that happen. So I'm continuing it on this show. But we are celebrating women. Even though it's Easter, we're still celebrating us. <laughs> so we have two wonderful women on the show today. Uh, one is an acupuncture um, physician, a massage therapist. Another is um, a former United Nation um, translator and a performer. So we are looking forward to their interviews. So we'll be right back. As I said before, we're still celebrating women. So I wanted to talk a little about how we as women sometimes doesn't appreciate who we are, our creativity, our resilience, our worth, and how we sometimes underestimate ourselves. Now, I'm not talking about all women because you know we have a lot of strong, determined, and confident women we are talking about those that aren't. I find that some women have a lot of self-doubt. They don't believe in themselves. They're afraid to step out on their own, out of their comfort zone. They, they just lack a lot of confidence in themselves. And I think that's such a tragedy. You know, I, I, I think we, are so powerful as women. I think we're the strongest being that we have. Welcome back. For years, I have known about acupuncture, Chinese medicine, but not sure exactly how it worked. I've had it done before to relieve some of my stress. I stress a lot. But today we have a guest to help us understand a little more about acupuncture and how it works. She's an acupuncture physician, physical therapist assistant, massage therapist, and a certified health coach. She is the owner operator of a Balance You acupuncture and wellness center located in Riverside in Jacksonville, Florida. She has been working in the health and wellness industry for over 25 years, including acupuncture for 17 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rosemary Allen, welcome. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Sharon, for having me. I'm really happy to be here as well. Thank you. First of all, what is acupuncture and how does it work? Acupuncture is an amazing natural medicine, and it is from originated, originated from China. And what it does, it works on helping the body to heal itself naturally. So acupuncture, when you hear about acupuncture, it's really talking about streams of energy that within, is um, within our bodies. Every living thing has energy. The trees, animals, us, and, and, and a, a good example of the energy is when you turn the light on, right, you turn the light on, you can see the effects of the light, but you can't see the electricity. 
when you step outside, you can feel the wind on your face, but you don't really see the wind, right? So we have the same kind of mechanism within our body that God created that actually helps with to um, help the organs to, to run better. Because when God created our bodies, he wanted our bodies to be able to fix itself. So because of, um, you know, when you have stress or whatever the issues are that you have, it really affects the system. So what acupuncture does now is if you know what the issues are, then you can find the acupuncture meridian. It, the, there's meridians that run, it's like, just like how you have the, the, the um, nervous system, you have the circulatory system, you also have an energetic system, which we call meridians. The meridians, they run all over your body and they, they innervate with the different organs in your body, right? So when something is wrong, it's not a fact that the meridians are, are bad, it's just that everything is get, got um, stagnated. Everything is like a blockage in the system because now the energy can't flow well. So if you have emotional problem, physical problem, no matter what the issues are, it creates a blockage in the system. And a good way to, a, a good example of a blockage is if you have a hose and there's a kink in the hose, right? When you turn the water on, the water will still come out, but it won't come out to its fullest potential until the kink is taken out, right? Once you remove the kink, the water comes gushing out. It's the same thing with the body. When the system is, 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 is ill or diseased, it's caused because there's a lot of blockage in the system. Once the blockage is taken out, then the energy gets to flow better. The energy takes the blood to where it needs to go, takes the nutrients to where it needs to go and helps uh, release different hormones that's necessary for the body to function well. So in a snapshot, that is what acupuncture is. In order to access the acupuncture, there are points on the body. So if you can consider the points as like gateways on the system, it's like having the highways and then you have, you know how you have the exit and the entrance ramp that you get on and off? You yes, can only yes. get on and you can only get off at a certain point. So knowing where the acupuncture points are, is like getting to that little gate that allows you access. Now, when we go to school, we go to learn what are those access, what points are, what points are related to what organs and what disease can they fix? So that's why when we know the points, you put the points, you put the needle in the point and then it stimulates the body. There's nothing on the needles. The needles are sterile. There's nothing on them. They come sterile in different packs and I was gonna show them to you. You can't even really see them. When people hear about needles, they think about injection needles. This is nothing like that. This is like <laughs> a, strand, a strand of hair on your head. Right. This is how the needles are very, very tiny. So this part that you, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't. The blue part that you can see, that's a guide tube. It's a tube that we put, we string the needle in. And up here is where we have the, the handle of the needle. See, this is the handle and down here is the needle. It's so tiny, you can't even see them. You probably won't be able to see it well. But anyway, so we, we this has 10 needles in this little pack right here, 10. When I open it, I hold the needle in a certain way that it doesn't, it doesn't contaminate the needle and I string it through this little tube, I find the point, I put the needle in the tube and I tap the, tap the needle in and it goes in. Once the needle is in, feel a gentle electrical sensation because the needle stimulates the energy. That's how it works. So when I know what the problem is, then I, in my head, I'm trying to figure out what points can I use to fix that? So in my head, I'm, I'm figuring out the points and then I put the needles in there. Then the patient will lay on the bed for about 30 minutes while the needles are work, while the energy is working, because when it stimulates the needles, you'll actually feel movements going back and forth in your body from the energy moving. It's amazing. It's amazing the, what, what it does. I know because you did that to me before and you are right. You say needle, I'm like, oh gosh. But then you <laughs> did it to me. You put it all over my hand, yeah. behind my ear, and I didn't feel I didn't feel the needle. Right, you know? right. So, I, I, it's, it, people shouldn't be afraid to try acupuncture yeah. because it really does help. But oh, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, I did it. I can't, I can't believe I did it, you know. And yeah, wow. I, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but to you, due to the COVID pandemic era that we're in, we're all right. experienced that now, unfortunate, unfortunately. This has caused an increase in mental health conditions, mm -hmm. right. including stress and depression. I know a lot of people going through that right now. Right. Tell right. us how acupuncture may be able to help us to manage stress 
And also, how can we help ourselves using acu acupressure to stress management? There we okay. go. In Chinese medicine, each emotion is related to different organs. So the emotion of stress is usually related to like anger or frustration, and that really affects the liver and the gallbladder channel. A lot of times when people are having stress, they'll have tension in their necks, you know, yes. headache, because the way how the gallbladder meridian runs along the head, and you'll have a lot of like um, gas and bloating sometimes, digestive upset, because once the, the, the liver and the gallbladder is affected, the next set of um, organs that's going to affect this is the digestive. So a lot of times when people are having stress issues, then they start having digestive issues as well too, because it just go like a domino effect from one organ to the next organ to the next organ. So when the person has stress, the first thing I want to do is find out what the situation is, what caused the stress, right? So we do an evaluation on this person. When we do the evaluation, we're asking them questions. Then we take a look at their tongue because their tongue has what we call organ representations on the tongue. And I brought this little thing. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see because of the gloss from the light. But this is what the tongue looks like. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, yeah, yes. I can see it. So if you see those little lines and stuff, those are how the organs are represented on the wow. tongue. Yeah. So when the person comes wow. in for the evaluation, I'm taking a look at their tongue because the tongue has so many secrets of what's going on internally in the body. And that is how I formulate the patient's diagnosis. I, it's not just by what they tell us because we want to figure out, make sure that we confirm what the patient says. And a lot of times the patient come in and they, they say something, but other things are showing up on the tongue that they don't even realize that is there, right? So we look for different things on the tongue body. We look for the color of the tongue, what it's look like, because the tongue's supposed to be a pretty pink color. If it's too red or too purplish, we know that there's something going on. If the tongue is swollen, you're gonna have teeth marks on the side of the tongue, that is something going on. If the coat of the tongue is too thick, that is something going on. So all of these are indicators that you have issues going on internally, right? So when we see all of that, we also look on the underside of the tongue. If there is a, if the, if there's veins under there that's swollen with purple blood, that means also the energy is not moving. So all these things is what we take, we do, and we look. Now here on the front, I don't know if you can see this as well. This is how yeah, we, we check the pulse. So these are the pulse that we check. And in Western medicine, when they check the pulse, they're really checking for the heart. In Eastern medicine, which is Chinese medicine, when we check the pulse, we're really checking for the characteristics of what the energy feels like on each of these organs. Because this is telling us it's 12 different systems that we check here, 12 different organs, right? So when we're looking at it, we're feeling to see what the energy feels like on each of those organs, because it's, it's telling you about the different system, like the digestive system, the, you, the kidney system, like the reproductive system, all these systems are presented on the inside of the wrist. So when we, we, we get the information from the person, I look at the tongue, I look for all the things that I just talk, talked about, and then I check the pulse. With the information that I get from all of this is what formulate that person's own unique diagnosis to their body. And the treatments that are formulated to fit that person's, it's not like one size fit all. Everybody's treatment is unique to their own body. And that's why acupuncture works so well. And not only that, but it looks like it looks at mind, body, and spirit. So when we're fixing the person, we're looking at what's going on emotionally. You know, how can we help what's going on emotionally? So now you talk about stress. This is a great segue to get into stress. So when somebody comes in and they have stress, there are different things that their body's going to be showing. They're going to, sometimes they have sleep issues. They have insomnia. They can't sleep or they oversleep. They have digestive issues, either they have constipation or they have diarrhea or they overeat, they emotionally eat, right? Then we look at um, their, their sleep pattern because the sleep pattern also tells you what's going on as well. Sometimes if they have digestive issues, it can be like nervous stomach. You know, they'll have nervous nerves, their nerves going. So then I, when I find out what's the problem that they're having, I have to see where this coming from because different organs can also have mimic certain things. So you have to really fine tune to see which one of the organs that's out of balance that's creating the problem. So once you find that, then that's when you do the treatment. Now, the points that I would use, I would, I would, I'm just gonna demonstrate a little bit. And I have this thing I call my little guy. 
And I don't know if you can see the spots that I put on. I put tape right there. So if you have, if somebody would have stress, acupressure is a form that you can do on your own. And acupressure is trying to figure out where the acupuncture points are and just applying pressure to it. That's what they call acupressure. And you would do the acupressure for probably about a minute or, you know, like 60 seconds, um, just doing circular motion. So this one right here would be right between the eyes right here. You know where they call the third eye? So there's a point right there. And that point helps to calm the body, helps to calm the system down. So we use that. And I actually have something formal that I, because I really wanted you guys to get a good understanding of what the points does. So the yin tong, yin tong is the one I just showed you right there. Yin tong works on calming the system down. It helps with harmonizing the body, helps with bringing down the stress, helps with headache. If you have, um, if you have um, um, allergies, or head cold or stuff like that, this point is very good. It will help with all of that stuff. So this is yin tong, the first one. Now the second one would be the points on the shoulder. And can you see that? Yeah. Yes. So a good way of finding these is if you put your hand on your shoulder like that, where your middle finger goes, right behind it, if you press into that, you're gonna feel a soreness. Mm -hmm. It's like mm, yeah. just slightly to the back, right? That's, so uh, that yes. would be, that's on the gallbladder channel. And if oh. you can see my little oh. acupuncture guy, right? This is how the gallbladder channel run. You see this point right, this right down here. Let's make sure I got the right one here to show you guys. It's right here. So it runs all the way from between the toe. It comes all the way up, right? It goes all the way up to the side. It goes in, goes out. So sometimes people get flank pain. Flank is the, the pain that you have on the side sometimes. It comes all the way up. It goes around the arm. It goes up to the neck. So that's why you have a lot of problems sometimes when people have a lot of stress. They get a lot of tightness and tension in the neck. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes up to the back of the neck. I don't know if you can see the line. And then it goes to the side. And you see how it zigzags. So this one meridian zigzags all over the head, the front. And sometimes people will get frontal headache. Do you see where that came to the front? Sometimes they'll get Templar, temporal headache, that's to the side. So people get that. So when I put the point in here, this will help all of these things. If you have issues with say, for instance, um, your leg, and I put the point in, your, in here, it can help a headache up here because the way how the meridians run. So I can treat, I can use the points to fix, like if the person have a headache, I can fix them from the feet. If they have feet issue, I can fix them from the head. From the head. I can use right to fix left, left to fix right, back to fix front. And the back, if you see the points, all those are points. You see the lines? That's how the meridians run. Wow. Let me show you the front. I had to cover, cover him up because I'm not sure if kids are gonna be watching this. So I put a little skirt on him and he wasn't complaining about the skirt, but he got it. So these are the, <laughs> the points. Right. All right. So now another point here, and a lot of people don't realize that this point is really a good point for headaches. This is on the large intestine meridian, right? It's called Hegu. So this point is right between your thumb. You see that little where that crease is with your thumb? If you put your finger just right inside of the on the inside part and you press it, you can feel it. Just do it right there. Put your fingers together though, like that. Close your finger, Sharon. Yeah. And then feel just closer to the other finger, not the thumb, but the other one. It's gonna be very yeah. sensitive, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you have frontal headaches, and you know, with stress, a lot of times stress has headaches as well, you can use this point. And all you have to do is put pressure on it, on both sides, and just keep, you know, like massaging it, stimulating it, and that also will help the headache. You can use like a, an eraser and a pencil, you know, like the pencil, because that has just the right size to fit over it. And if you take that pencil and just rub it on, the, not the pencil itself, but the eraser, and just press it in that area, that would actually get the point. Because the points are not big. They're very small. All right, so that's on the large intestine channel. Now, the next one would be pericardium. Pericardium is right on the wrist, right up above the wrist right here. So right now I have two of them by the wrist, right? But the first one I'm talking about is the one that's a little higher up. And that's located like about... Sorry, that's located about right here where I put my finger like three fingers, right where this finger ends in the center of it. If you press in that one, that's a point right in there. 
And this is a, that, this is a major point for like nausea. If somebody's having nausea, digestive issues and helps with stress management and also helps with calming the brain, calming the mind, you know, helps if you have wrist pain or anything like that, you can use it for that as well too. Then the other one is heart seven. So that's on, when I say the name, that's the, that's the organ that they innervate, that, that they're, they're governed per se, right? So when I say the heart, this is the one on the heart channel. And the heart channel runs more on, on the, like on the little finger area coming up like that, right? So it's not so much on the little finger, but you can see how it runs. And I'm sure if you can see it so good, but right in here, you see that line going up closer to your little finger? That's the heart channel. So this one over here is what would be on the heart channel. Now, a good way to do this, if you're having, say for instance, say for instance, you have an interview like me right now and you get um, a little anxious and even sharing, you know, your actors and when they're getting ready to go on stage and they get anxious, this is a great point for them to do this. And that helps to stimulate both at the same time. Wow. You're just putting one hand in front of the other. I, I'm sorry, I got my thing on and all you got to do is just hit them like that together and that actually helps to calm the whole system down and gets the, the anxiety to calm i use it a lot for pregnant women when they have morning sickness this is one of the points that we use as well too all right so um i did that that, that. and then the last one i'm going to go over is liver three and that means it's on the liver channel and the liver channel is the one that's the most affected when you're under a lot of stress or if you're depressed, stuff like that, right? So the liver channel, it runs between the toe. You see how the big toe, just like this one is between the finger, the, the thumb and the second finger, the liver channel runs just like that on the toe. And then it goes all the way up. So at this point now, I put the paper to show. I don't know if you can see it. See, yeah. it's right, yeah. So it's right there. If you find it, your big toe and the second toe right in the middle there on the skin on the inside, not in between the toe, but above that is where that point is located. So between this one, one on the finger like that and this one, the one on the toe, we use these to actually help to balance the system as well. They call them the four gates because it's like it, it guards the system. So we use that to help to balance the system. So, so if you're go undergoing a lot of stress, even say if you're depressed or anything, I would say that you really want to talk to your doctor first, make sure all the things that I'm telling you is not to mitigate or cure or heal anything, but this is something just for educate, education purposes that can help you to tide yourself over until you go see the doctor. And of course, the acupressure works, but it's not as effective as the needles. If right. I put the needles in, you'll get a lot better results with the needles and a lot faster than the acupressure because that's non-invasive. The needle itself is invasive. Right. It goes in and then you feel it. And then once the patient has the needles in, they just relax. And let me tell you, people sleep and snore yes. with these needles yes. in. <laughs> Sounds it's like an oxymoron. Relaxing. Your body is so relaxed because it uh, helps with um, in increasing the hormones that help to relax the system. And you can use acupuncture for a lot of different things, right? Not just the stress and de depression, but you can use it for like headaches, migraine headache. My first introduction to acupuncture is with migraine headaches in Jamaica, many, many years ago. I didn't even know what acupuncture was at that time. And then when I got my, that treatment, I went in, I was so sick. I couldn't even walk straight. They had to leave me to go in. And I was crying because the headache was so bad. I was in my 20s at the time. And when I got that treatment, I went to a Chinese doctor at his home that my husband knew at the time. And he put electroacupuncture. So even with the needles, right? The needles are already stimulate. But we can also add electricity to the needles and mild electrical current, which helps to increase the frequency in the needles. So he did that to me and I was like thinking, oh my God, he's gonna electrocute me because I didn't know what I was. And I, I left, I left with no headache after going in such a bad shape. So can you imagine when I got home, everyone was looking at me like, what the heck happened? Because I left in such a bad shape and came back happy, smiling, nothing wrong, you know? So that's how acupuncture works. It can be so fast. But one thing people need to remember is that it's not an overnight fix with everything. The longer you have an issue is the longer it will take to, to get it well. So the sooner, you know, the more acute the issue is, the sooner it will get well. So 
you can use it to fix, um, like I say, migraine. I see a lot of fertility patients who are having issues with reproductive. We can do that as well. We can use it for any digestive issues, insomnia, because the way how we treat, we're not really treating the disease. We're treating the imbalance in the system. That's the perfect thing. Whatever is the imbalance, that's what we're treating with the needles and that's what fixes everything. I hope that that was able to give you guys some idea of what acupuncture is and how it works. Would insurance cover this? Some insurance do, but not all. Not all. So you have to make sure that your insurance covered. And sometimes insurance company are really slick. So they'll tell you, yes, yeah, they cover they acupuncture. Are. And then when you come in, they only cover acupuncture for say nausea or morning sickness. They don't cover it for back pain. So you have to make sure that you read the fine prints of your insurance, you know, but now with, with the, because of the epidemic, the um, epidemic with the drug situation, now that the, um, I think that the government has now um, started allocating acupuncture now where they're looking more at acupuncture now as natural health because people are getting so do doped up on the drugs. You know, because yes, people's yes. lives and a lot of lives are being lost because of being on those heavy duty drug medications. So acupuncture is now getting like some spotlight because of that yeah but we would need a referral to see you wouldn't we if we were to use insurance yes you would oh, you, unless okay. you have one that you can unless you have one that it doesn't matter like I, I think a ppo you can go to anybody without it but that's if they cover though the acupuncture so that's the most important thing to to find okay. out if your insurance cover your insurance coverage covers acupuncture Okay. Oh, Dr. Helen, know. I can I can attest to the fact that it does work because you've done it. To, you know, I've had it with you before. Yes, um, I did an interview with you before, do, and where you actually many, many years ago. the needles in my in my hand, and um, you have enlightened us on on the topic of acupuncture. And I have a niece. She was here. She went. She went, she drove four miles, four miles, four hours to Tampa from here mm -hmm. to go and see some natural type person. I'm not going to yeah. say why. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if you want to see Dr. Allen, it's worth the drive. I'm telling you, yeah. it really is mm -hmm. because it's a wonderful experience to have. Yeah. Thank you but so anyway, much. You're Dr. very welcome. Rosemary Thank Allen you. for being a guest and enlightening us on acupuncture. And I would suggest people really give you a call. We'll have your information right there. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. Princess, nice You're meeting welcome. you. Same here. You'll be uh, seeing me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, from when I'm supposed to go and see her too, but um, it will happen soon. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful interview. Very informa informative. We learned a lot. Anyone interested, in, for example, in acupuncture, give her a call. Our next guest is from St. Anne's, Jamaica. She's a former United Nations staff member. She has traveled to and lived all over the world, always finding time for music. She has recorded three solo albums and is about to release her fourth. She has also been included in at least three compilation albums, among them Chalice and Fab Five. She usually accompanies herself on guitar, but she is quite happy to perform with other musicians. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Charmaine Lemonius. Can you tell us what type of work you did while you were with the United Nations? Well, that's a, that's a great question, actually. I did several different types of jobs there. Um, I first started out as a clerk typist, Mm -hmm. Then I start. I moved into an area what that's called conference servicing, mm -hmm. and that's where my travel started because we have meetings all over the world. Then after that, I took an exam because I always love languages, and my first college degree is in Spanish. So I wow. decided I want to do something that I could use my language even more. So I took a an editor's exam, and I passed. In order to do that, you have to be. You have, you, can, you have to be able to work in three languages, my three, English, French, and Spanish. 
And so I passed that, I got promoted, and then I started doing editing. But then I also did a master's degree in international relations. So the next thing I know, they asked me if I would go into the field to serve in peacekeeping. So I became uh, a political affairs officer and an advisor to the head of the mission in the area of peacekeeping. And there I did three different, I worked in three different countries in Central America. The first one was for elections, but the other two were actually in the middle of a civil war and they sent us there. And so it was a bit hairy, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Tell a little bit you about know, yourself. Myself, um, I'm an April girl, I'm a Taurus. I think I am a very creative person. I like to see the glass half full rather than half empty. It's very hard to get me to throw in the towel. I'm always looking for some way to work something out and um, tend to be happy most of the time. I love people. I love animals. I love the earth. And I'm one of the tree hugging type of people. <laughs> Don't like killing anything, any animal. If I, you know, they, I make exceptions for mosquitoes um, uh, and the occasional ant. But apart from that, I try not to hurt any any creature. Honestly, I mean, we in Jamaica, most people are so scared of lizards. Me, I will just pick him up and put him outside. You know, before somebody who would kill him comes along. <laughs> and. Um, Music, music runs in my veins. <laughs> See, I just killed a mosquito. Music runs in my veins. <laughs> and uh, I'm happiest when I'm, when I'm around music or musicians. And that's why I love the work I do here in Jamaica because I, I run a, a studio. When I'm not performing, which of course, now that we're in COVID, I hardly perform. So, but I work for a wonderful company called Alternative Music and um, I'm the general manager. And it's, I love it. I love my job. I get to meet all kinds of artists. I get to sometimes sing with them, but most times just hang out with them. And I have so many good memories and so many pictures. And so that when their time comes, like it did for Toots and Bonnie Whaler, I, I had the pleasure of knowing them. And I have my pictures to, to remember the good times. And I sang with Toots on stage and I wouldn't change it for anything. You know, you know um, the last month was Women's Month and we did the first show and I wanted this song, I Am Woman by Helen Reddy and I couldn't find any, any of my people to, that knew the song or had the time to, do, to learn the song. So I called Grub Cooper from Fab, Fab Five and I said, I need someone to sing this song. I gotta have it. I mean, it's a woman's anthem. And you came through and I really right. appreciated that. But I must say, I'm looking at you and you look just like my sister. One of my sister, you look just like her. And my other sister's name is Charmaine also. So I'm looking at you and I'm seeing my sister, Jennifer, and your, your, your name is Charmaine. So that's, that's just amazing. But um, we're so <laughs> happy to have you on the show. But back to the music, I just fell in love with you. With, you're so natural looking. And the way you did the I, I, I Am Woman with the guitar. I, I mean, it was just, now I know why I felt that way. Because you just say you're from, you're, you love the earth. You know, and it just huh? came through <laughs> when you were doing the song. But um, what your new song that you're coming out with, your new album, Rava, um, uh -huh. what, is, what is that about? What, and what song will you be performing for us? Tell us a little well, about that. It's, it's an album that I recorded a very long time ago, actually. It's about, oof, I think I recorded maybe... 10 years ago, eight years ago, in between, you know, some here, stop, start again, stop, start again. It has several of my originals on it and it has some covers on it. Um, there's some of my favorite songs, you know, I can tell you some of them for, that you would know. Obviously you would know my originals, but for example, I'm doing Angel of the Morning. 
I'm doing a, a Jimmy Cliff medley. Um, what else would you know on there? How Can I Live? The Dwight Pinkney song that Dennis Brown got so famous doing. But all of it in, in my style, right? I'm also doing the Tracy Chapman song, um, Baby Can I Hold You? You know, oh. sorry. Yeah. Yes, so, oh, I, I love, love that. that. I love oh, that. If I do say so myself, it's a lovely <laughs> album. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, I, that's just, so that's this one, right? Because I've been sitting on it for so long and I said, okay, it's time to release this. And then I'm working on another project, which is going to be all Spanish. All the oh, songs awesome. are going to be in Spanish. So, but, but get this, you're going to recognize the songs, you know, because guess what I did? I translated them into Spanish. So I'm going to be performing, for example, Tessa and Shin song, Hideaway. I, I translated it into Spanish and I'm going to be doing it in Spanish. Um, Gregory Isaac song, you know, um, Love Overdue. I translated it into Spanish. So I'm going wow. to perform it in Spanish. It's going to be good. Be ready awesome. for that one. Awesome. It's different. Awesome. You know, it's something different. And again, Spanish is like my, I'm, I'm bilingual. I really am. It's, it's almost, it's just like English to me. I speak it extremely well. So I don't, for me, I can go back and forth with no problem. So I you thought, know, yeah, why not? You know, um, we're still celebrating Women's Month because we missed the latter part of it. So we're still mm -hmm. celebrating women. And I, I mean, we are so multifaceted you know, in, in, in the things that we can do. Look at you, you work for the, the, the United Nation and other big companies, and mm -hmm. you follow your passion where, when it comes mm -hmm. to music. You know? I do, I'm lucky. I'm fortunate so, in that. Yes, definitely. Um, what's the name of the song you're going to perform? I know you're doing I Am Woman. But, I'm doing um, that. Yes, I'm going to do I, one of my originals. That you, yes. I'm going to do an original of mine and um, it's called City Life mm -hmm. and it, it's a song that is dear to my heart it it's really talks about how we treat each other and um, um, it, it's kind of a serious song but I do it in a beat like a like almost a Naya Bingi type of thing. Uh, uh, Naya Bingi, yeah, Naya Bingi. Oh, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that I won't lose anybody, you know, because of the seriousness of the song, because of the, the beat is, it's catchy, you know? I love, I love that beat. I love yeah. that Naya Bingi. Oh, well, yeah. then you're going to like my song. It's a nice mm -hmm. song. I think everybody can yeah. relate to it, you know, and yeah. it, it talks about life in the city. Is that why we don't? help each other is that why we turn our back because we're just so busy in life in the city you know and um not being from a city um i think is what led me to, to that idea that maybe it's not that people are not kind or not nice you know but they're just running around with so much stuff in their head don't it and they're just trying to survive themselves so i think that's why it, it, it's it's really not that we're horrible you know well, I like to think that. <laughs> Hopefully like not. <laughs> yeah. I think there are yeah. more good people than bad people. Absolutely. You know? But Absolutely. I think everyone is just so busy with their own life that sometimes mm -hmm. they don't they don't take a minute, you know, to it's say true. hello. You know, how's your it's day? True. Um, <laughs> right. I have not been to Jamaica in, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say a long, 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 long time. <laughs> oh, um, and now too long. Long. you won't be coming anytime oh. soon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, everyone told me that Jamaica has changed. I mean, I've been in this country over 50 years, you know, telling oh. my age here. Really? But um, <laughs> there as, a, as a baby. But I, they said I wouldn't know Jamaica if I went back to Jamaica because it has changed so much. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Whereabouts are you from? Well, I know I was born in Kingston. Oh, it's, it's um, I don't know. It, yeah, it's very different now. There's a lot of modern things. 
there are good things and they're not so good things, you know, but Kingston has grown. Kingston is a metropolis. You know, you've got skyscrapers now, you what? know, yeah, a lot of townhouses and it's not the Kingston, Kingston you remember. Traffic. Yes. It has become, you know, townhouse, whatever, the capital. It's, it's every townhouse every capital. Apartment <laughs> buildings. Yeah. You know, it used to be tall houses and, you know, mango trees. And yeah, we still have the, the most mango trees, I think, on the planet in Kingston. <laughs> I mean, mangoes <laughs> everywhere you look, there's a mango tree or an ackee tree or a breadfruit tree. That's the beauty of it. You still, it's still a green city in spite of all the buildings. I actually like it. I remember when I returned to Jamaica in 2000, I was terrified of living in Kingston because I thought it was going to be, I just thought it was going to be, you know, people shooting gun every day and stabbing up people and robbing. <laughs> I was afraid. I come from a very small town, you know. Well, that's but, what we hear here. That's what people Yeah. Hear. And of course there's crime, but I honestly can't say I feel threatened. I'm out there every day. I drive myself up and down. I go through halfway tree. The only reason I don't like to go through halfway tree all the time is because of the traffic, but not because I'm afraid or think anybody going to do anything. And, um, you know, but yes, there is crime, you know, but where isn't? I mean, at least we don't have these mass shootings like you all having up there, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> it's not perfect. Nowhere is, but Nowhere. I, I, I love it. I love Jamaica. I think that we, yeah, there are some things that we have started doing, a copying perhaps that I wish we didn't, but there you go. You know, it's still beautiful. It's still one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen. And it's not because I'm Jamaican. It's because I've traveled a lot. And yeah, Jamaica you is so pretty. <laughs> You just get in your car, right? And you drive and you're just amazed at the beauty of the place, just the raw beauty of the country. You know, once you get outside of, even in Kingston, because the flowers, the bougainvillea and the, all the kinds of flowers, even in the middle of a city, where do you get that? Not too many places. And then when you leave the city now and you're driving in the countryside, the rivers and the waterfalls just in front, just coming down out of the mountains and the, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> and I hear that they, there's a lot of highways there now. Yes, we have a highway system. It's still being built. Um, eventually, they you supposed to be able to go all the way around Jamaica on the highway if you if you want to. Mm. Um, wow. That's the idea. So the North Coast Highway, but it's beautiful. It's a nice road but they didn't destroy the nature to make it. So when you're driving, you're oh. looking at verdant hills and oh, coconut trees. Yeah, it is good. They didn't mash up everything to do it. You I know can't I mean? wait to come back to Jamaica to visit. Oh to my goodness, back. I'm so right. jealous. You need to, oh, can I, I want to show you something in honor of women's, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see these ladies? You did that? Yes. No, I didn't do it. A oh. friend of mine, her name is Lee, Lee Ann Haslam. I she love it. it. Yeah, Isn't that's it lovely? Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. So I got it, it, is I beautiful. Got it from her. I just thought it was perfect to honor women. And, you know, so when I look at it, I feel happy. Oh, yes, definitely. We as women <laughs> have to appreciate each other. You know, we were talking about women and, mm -hmm. and, and the accomplishment. And then we started talking about Jamaica. Well, I know that. <laughs> that's okay. We do so many things. And yes. there's so many things that I still want to do. You know, I'm supposed to be retired, but I don't have time. We need more hours in the day. You know, <laughs> I, there's so many things. I love cooking. I want to, I want to learn how to um, sew. I want to be able to crochet better. I love gardening. I love, it's just, just, just so many things. <laughs> you know what I love? Your energy. Yes. <laughs> I, <love> yes. Energy. <laughs> I would love to meet you in person. I can't just person, imagine. I would too. <laughs> okay. So tell us the name of the song that you will be oh, performing. Oh, City Life. It's going City to be, Life. I'm going to sing 
city life for you. Okay. And Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Charmaine Limonius. City life. You damn at the stoplight Want to wipe your glass With dirty soap water Them trying to do it fast The man say no, lady say go They move on down the line Get within range, bam the light change Have you wait till next time Is it life in the city? that makes us turn our back or is it something deeper something deeper that we lack oh tell me oh tell me a young man on the corner trying to get along him chant to lyrics with a rhyme and start to build a song but the people just stare them no care them seen this all before but them tired of the constant begging and don't want to hear no more is it life in the city that makes us turn our back or is it something deeper Something deeper that we lack Oh, tell me Tell me Oh, tell me Yes, tell me The young man sees the vacant faces And swiftly moves along he knows it's not the time or place to try and sing his song. Oh, and I sit there in silence. I watch the scene unfold. I keep on I wondering to myself, how could we be so cold? Is it a life in the city that makes us turn our back? Or is it something deeper, something deeper that we lack? Oh, is it life? Too many people dying, too many crying. Is it life? When are we gonna face them, embrace them? Is it life? When are we gonna see them, feel them? Is it life?
is Gabby, one of your hosts for the Teen Talk segment. Um, today, we are going to be doing something a little bit different from how um, our normal segments are. We're going to be talking about um, a, a very different subject, and that subject being respecting yourself as a woman or a male or a non-binary person or a tranny. Um, because the reason that we're going to talk about this is because a lot of people do not respect themselves. They do not have the amount of self-respect and they see other people's opinions, um, as how they should live their life. And this is not something you should do. You should not live based off what someone tells you. If someone tells you, hey, go on this diet, it makes you do this. If you do not feel comfortable doing that if you do not have that self-respect to tell yourself no i look fine i don't need to go on that diet then you're going to look too much into how other people see you how other people view you so that's a really big thing in today's society and i want to touch upon that topic because it's it's very um disheartening hearing that people do do that thing those type of things and it's mostly adults in say the lgbtq community some of them do not have that type of self-respect and some of them do but even if you're not a part of that community you still have to have self-respect for yourself because you're gonna make someone push you to the point where you don't have that mindset where you can make your own decisions. See, I learned self-respect for myself at a very young age, and you can ask anybody who knows me. I don't let people pick and choose things for me. I don't let other people tell me how I should live my life, how I should do certain things. Yes, um, I'm not saying that you can't take advice, you can't, like, not listen to anybody, because taking advice is really important, you should take advice, because it could help you, but don't, I don't let people run me, I don't let people run my life, I don't let, like, I get guided decisions, but I won't let people tell me how I should do things, I don't let people tell me what I should eat how I should work out, or what activities I should do. I'll take advice, and I'll go based on advice, but ultimately, I'll make that own, just my own decision because that's my, my, that's my preference of self-respect. But even, like, if you're part of, like, maybe the older generation, maybe some of you older folks are watching this right now, and you're probably thinking, what is this girl talking about? A lot of us kids, specifically my generation, Generation Z and a couple millennials, we see the world differently. We see certain things in a different perspective. And that perspective really, it really guides us on whether and how and how we make decisions. And your self-experiences your your life choices have guided you to where you are now and that is great for you but we live in a very different society where there's a lot going on like children today like a five six and seven year olds know about same gender relationships and they're growing up in a world where there's so much happening and politics is the main it's, it's the talk of the 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 room and there's there's like criticism and i don't think that they're they're obviously well not obviously but they're probably going to grow up with that self-respect from a young age they're probably going to be like hey look i grew up in this day and age where self-respect is really important and I think that that generation is going to be one, probably one of the most successful because we have a lot more experiences and we're going through a lot more than people before us have. Like, we stayed 
doing school at home, we had to push through the distractions of our phones and watching TV. And we couldn't see our friends, we couldn't go out with them. We, we literally had to figure it out by ourselves. And a lot of that figuring out was figuring out how, how I view myself. So, and I think that's the same for a lot of kids. They were figuring out how they see themselves and how they want to be seen. But um, the gist of what I'm trying to get at, what I'm trying to get at is you, in general, it doesn't matter what age you are, you need to have the confidence, that's the word, the confidence to go out and show off and wear what you want and be who you want and talk how you want without feeling the pressure of being judged by another person. You shouldn't feel hurt or miserable if a person tells you, hey, I don't like your outfit. You, if you don't have that self-respect, you're gonna take that, those couple words into like into its context and you're gonna be trying to figure out, oh, why don't they like this outfit? Oh, do I not look good in it? So I'm gonna leave you guys with this. To have self conf to have self respect, you have to have confidence. And when you have confidence, you build self respect. You do not need others people other people's opinions on you to build self self-respect because that lowers your self-esteem and i know there's a lot of strong and independent people watching this so i really do hope that my little rambles slash spiel 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 <laughs> um made you guys think about something because this topic is really important and i hope you guys know why so yeah i'm gonna leave you guys with that have a nice day. Great discussion, Gabby. It's wonderful to see teenagers making a difference. Thank you. Coming up next, we have Charmaine singing one of my favorite songs. I think it's a woman's anthem, I Am Woman by Helen Reddy. Yay! <laughs> Numbers too big to ignore And I know too much to go back and pretend Cause I've heard it all before And I've been down there on the floor No one's ever gonna tell me down again Oh yes, I am wise But it's a wisdom for the pain Yes, I pay the price Look how much I gained if I have to. I can do anything. I am strong. I am invincible. I am a woman. Oh, I am a woman. Watch me grow. See me standing toe to toe. As I spread my loving arms across the land But I'm still an embryo I've got a long, long way to go Until I make my brothers understand Oh, yes, I am wise But it's wisdom for the pain Yes, I pay the price But look how much I gain if I have to, I can take anything. I am strong. I am invincible. I am a woman. I am invincible. Yes, I am. Thank you so much, Charmaine. 
I, I'm so glad I was able to get that song done. <laughs> uh, I want to thank Charmaine Lamonius and Dr. Rosemary Allen for being the guest on the show today. Thank you both for coming on and telling us a little about yourselves and celebrating women. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Bashment Bay TV. Our next episode will be Sunday, April 18th. I hope you will join us then. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Comment. You can comment um, if you have any suggestion that you would like to share with us, please um, contact us with the information below. So until next time, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>